Hi, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Melanie Morris. I'm an associate professor of surgery in the division of GI surgery at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. And I'm gonna talk about my work today, post-operative 30-day readmissions, time to focus on what happens outside the hospital. As you may know, readmission rates are now publicly reported with financial implications. The Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services penalizes hospitals with higher rates of readmission for congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction, pneumonia, chronic lung disease, joint replacement, and cardiac bypass surgery, with plans to expand the diagnosis included. In 2015, 54% of U.S. hospitals were penalized. Next year, this is an estimated $528 million that hospitals in the U.S. will be penalized, which will be an increase of $108 million. The maximum reduction for any hospital is 3%, and the average penalty for hospitals last year was 0.73% of Medicare payment to each hospital penalized. Penalizing hospitals assumes that postoperative readmissions are preventable and that readmissions are indicative of the quality of care during the index hospitalization. Predicting readmission would allow for targeted interventions to prevent them. Determining the risk of and reasons for readmission after surgery is difficult. Prior published studies use big administrative data to study readmission. Veterans Affairs data is ideal to study readmission. Most veterans receive all their care and medicines through the VA. Laboratory data, prior healthcare utilization, medications, and vital signs are all available, which is not true of large data. The aim of our study is to understand the relative contributions of patient factors, operative characteristics, and postoperative hospital course on unplanned 30-day postoperative readmissions. To answer this question, we performed a retrospective study of VA Surgical Quality Improvement Program cohort on inpatient general, vascular, and orthopedic surgery, patients who had a postoperative length of stay of greater than two days between October 2007 and September of 2014. We excluded patients who died. The variables we examined were categorized into the following groups, preoperative, operative, postoperative but pre-discharge, and post-discharge. The data sources we used included the VA Surgical Quality Improvement Program uh, data for preoperative, operative, and postoperative variables. We then queried the corporate data warehouse for laboratory values, and these included things like the closest preoperative and the highest and lowest postoperative, as well as vital signs and pain scores from 30 days preoperative through hospital discharge. We also used the corporate data warehouse for sociodemographic factors, such as marital status and insurance coverage. And finally, we used the CDW for prior healthcare utilization, such as emergency department visits, primary care visits, mental health visits, and post-discharge admissions. We defined readmission using administrative data in the 30 days following discharge. Readmission reasons were classified by ICD-9 codes and reviewed by three clinicians. We performed univariate and bivariate statistics and multivariable logistic regression modeling. We constructed these models by sequentially adding groups of variables, and then we compared our models using R-squared and C-statistics. So what did we find? Our study revealed 237,441 surgeries at 121 VA hospitals. The overall 30-day readmission rate was 11.1%. This did differ based on specialty. Vascular surgery patients had the highest readmission rates at 15.4%, followed by general surgery at 12.9%, and orthopedic surgery at 7.6%. The top five procedures performed accounted for over half of all surgeries we examined, and these were knee arthroplasty, colorectal resections, hip replacement, cholecystectomy, and peripheral vascular bypass. Our demographics were those you would expect of a veteran cohort. 94.5% of our patients were male, 78% were white, and 46.7% were married. Almost all patients were admitted from the community or outpatient setting. 13% of our patients had an ASA classification greater than or equal to four. 10.4% were partially or totally dependent. 17.2% had a history of depression. 26% had non-insulin-dependent or insulin-dependent diabetes. 
the average length of post-operative hospital stay was 6.9 days, and 6.1% of our patients experienced a pre-discharge complication from their surgery. This chart shows you the daily hazard for readmission based on specialty. General surgery is shown in green, per vascular surgery is shown in red, and orthopedic surgery is shown in blue. As you will see here, general surgery patients had the highest daily risk of readmission during the first week, and then this tapered off over time. Vascular surgery patients had a higher risk of readmission for up to two weeks after discharge before it began tapering off. And orthopedic surgery patients had the lowest risk of readmission at all time points examined. We then examined the readmission reasons and classified them into groups. The majority of readmissions were for wound complications, and this was true for all vascular, general, and uh, orthopedic surgery patients. General surgery patients also had a very high risk of readmission for GI reasons, and these included things like ileus and obstruction. You can see the other reasons for readmission and their frequencies listed below. We then performed our logistic regression modeling, which you will see listed here. Again, we grouped factors into preoperative data, operative data, postoperative course, and post-discharge uh, variables. Our preoperative data included things like demographics, comorbidities, social and behavioral factors, preoperative labs and vital signs, and the planned procedure type. These are all things you would know on the day of surgery. Including all this into our model, we were only able to predict the variation in readmission risk 8.6% of the time. We then included our operative data, things like procedure complexity and operative characteristics. Adding this amount of detail into the model improved our predictive ability to 8.8%. Next, we included things that we, you would find in the postoperative course, including postoperative pain, labs and vital signs, and discharge destination. These are all things that you would know on the day of discharge. Including all this level of information, we could only predict the variation in readmission risk 10.2% of the time. Finally, if you did include post-discharge complications and ER utilization, it improved our predictive ability up to 18.6. This graph shows what I just discussed with both the R squared and the C statistics on it. And again, you will see that the majority of our predictive ability is based on things that you would know before surgery. And the majority is based on demographics and comorbidities. We then mo did a specific model for each uh, specialty type. So we looked at general surgery, vascular surgery, and orthopedic surgery to see if we were better at predicting readmission in any one of these groups. Well, we weren't. Um, general surgery, we had a little more information from operative and postoperative data. Vascular surgery was similar to general surgery. We did have a little better predictive capability overall. And orthopedic surgery, we had a little more contribution to the model from preoperative variables. Then we modeled readmission based on readmission reasons and specialty. Again, you'll see here general surgery is in green, vascular surgery is in red, and orthopedic surgery is in blue. So even knowing this level of detail of what specialty was operating on the patient and what the readmission reason was, the best we could do is predict orthopedic surgery patients who were readmitted for pneumonia, and we could only do this 14% of the time. So in conclusion, readmission is difficult to predict at the time of discharge, despite exhaustive statistical modeling with granular clinical patient level detail. Preoperative patient factors and post-discharge complications contribute the most to predictive models. Efforts to decrease readmission should focus on modifiable patient-level risk factors, transitions of care, and minimizing post-operative complications. Thank you very much for your attention.